years I've met with a lot of gardeners and I find that gardeners tend to fall into two different categories. There's the plant collectors and your garden designers. Now, if you're like me and maybe a plant collector or some might call me a plant hoarder, you go to the nursery and you see a unique and interesting plant and you have to have it. You might not even have the right environmental conditions in your yard and you might not even have more space for another plant, but you go ahead and buy it because you have to get it. Now you also have gardeners that really respect the design aspect of their landscape and they will maybe have a uh, purple and yellow perennial garden and they go to a nursery and they have a little bit more willpower than I do. Say they see a white flower and it looks great and is interesting but they know that they shouldn't buy it because it doesn't fit in with their design. Now as gardeners we always focus on the plants and while that's the fun and exciting thing to talk about um, anytime you're building something new you have to have a strong foundation and in a garden that foundation is our soil. So today we're going to focus on how to take a soil sample and as we go through the season we're going to focus on even more aspects about the soil. In order to do a soil test you're going to need a couple of things. We have here a soil probe and you can check one of these out at your OSU County Extension Office. It's a great instrument to be able to pull cores um, in order for us to sample our soil. If you don't have one you can check one of these out at your local County Extension Office. Another instrument you might need is just a plain old screwdriver because a lot of times our soil will get stuck in here and it's nice to be able to push that out. If you don't have a soil probe, you can use a hand trowel. This one's nice because it actually has the measurements on here. You're going to want to take a full six inches of that soil profile every time you take a core sample. The other thing we have here are our soil bags and this is what we're going to actually send our sample in. Um, and a marker in order to mark this stuff. Now for most homeowners you're just going to want a routine sample and that'll give you your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium and also your pH of your soil. This sample will cost about ten dollars um, but it's really worth it because the OSU Stillwater Lab is calibrated for Oklahoma soils. Now we also have a soil bucket. Um, it's just a plain old bucket that's been cleaned out so that we can add our core samples in here and get that mixture to put into our soil bag. Once you have all of your equipment, you also want to think about where you're going to sample. Um, a lot of times people ask how much of a space I can sample and it's really not defined on how large. What you want to think about is how the gardens have been maintained. Here we're going to um, actually sample our vegetable garden which has been maintained that way so we've added fertilizer for our vegetables. We're also going to be sampling the outside of the vegetable garden which has not been maintained. It has not had any compost or fertilizer added to it but this summer we're looking at adding a new garden so we want to make sure that we know what type of nutrients we're dealing with before we install those plants. Another area that we're going to sample is our turf. Um, the lawn is typically maintained differently than the flower garden or the vegetable garden and so we are going to sample that separately also. Late winter, early spring is a great time to test your soil because it's been laying dormant. We haven't added any compost or fertilizer to our vegetable garden here and so we'll be able to get an accurate reading of what nutrients are available to those plants that we will soon be installing into our vegetable garden. Here we're going to sample uh, like I said, our vegetable garden and you want to make sure to move out any irrigation lines so you don't puncture them. Also move away any mulch because you just want the soil. We're going to push this into the ground pretty deep in order to get a good six inches of the soil profile. This will give us the reading for the amount of nutrients that are right there in the root zone for the plants to grow. We're going to add this to our soil bucket. You're going to repeat this process 15 times because it's been identified that 15 core samples will give you the most accurate reading on your test results. When you're collecting your soil cores, you want to make sure that you're taking 15 samples from random areas in the garden that you're testing. Once you have this, you want to make sure to remove any sort of debris that might have gotten in there because you're simply wanting to test the soil. We're going to mix this up and break it all up 
And once this is mixed up pretty good, we're then going to fill our soil bag that we have. Now, if you don't have one of these soil bags, you can use some sort of container or baggie, but once you get it to the extension office, you wanna make sure that the soil and only the soil gets transferred into one of these bags. You also wanna make sure that you're filling up your bag completely full um, so that you're giving them plenty of soil for their analysis. So you can see here we have a, a, a full bag and we're simply going to tie that off and then mark on here that we want a routine sample. Now when you take this into the extension office, they're going to put some barcodes on here that will identify who this belongs to and you'll get your results in about seven to ten days. So now we have our soil sample for our vegetable garden and we're going to repeat this process outside of the vegetable garden as we plan a new garden out there and then also in the turf area which has been maintained differently also. I would encourage you all to take advantage of these nice warm days and get out and sample your garden as well to ensure that you're building the best foundation for a successful garden this year. And also as you get your results you'll be able to follow along with us as we discuss all the intricacies of soil. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.